aliases does one condition need to have? Freckles, pigmentation, hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, melasma, cloasma, pregnancy mask, sun damage, age spots, or how about just pain in the you know what? Let's start with the responsible party, the melanocyte. It's responsible for your beautiful skin color, but did you know that we all have virtually the same numbers of melanocytes, no matter your Fitzpatrick rating? Darker skins just produce more and darker melanosomes. The melanosomes are large and distributed singly, where in my Irish Scottish complexion, they are smaller and packaged in little clusters. When we talk about hyperpigmentation, we are referring to the overproduction of melanin. Hypopigmentation is the absence of pigmentation. You see this sometimes when a wound heals and the scar is completely void of any color. Albinism is a complete absence of any pigment in the skin. There's an absence of the amino acid tyrosinase altogether. Vitiligo is a disease that causes a loss of skin color in patches. The discolored areas usually gets bigger with time. Vitiligo occurs when the melanocytes die or stop functioning. Vitiligo affects people of all skin types, but it may be more noticeable in individuals with higher Fitzpatricks. If you like what you've seen and want more of the same, please hit like and subscribe. When you hear the term constitutive pigmentation, it means it's generated without exposure to UV radiation or hormone reaction. Facultative induced pigmentation means there's a change in pigmentation that occurs with exposure to UV radiation, hormones, or inflammation. This type of pigmentation may be reversible. Melasma falls under the facultative induced pigmentation, most commonly caused by hormonal changes. Melasma, also called cloasma or pregnancy mask, is a hyperpigmentation of the cheeks, forehead, or around the mouth. It's characterized by patchy tan or brown macular lesions. Sun exposure will increase the melanization. This condition sometimes goes away on its own with the balancing of hormones. Home care and in-clinic treatments are the same for melasma as for hyperpigmentation. Lighter skin produces more pheomelanin and darker skin produces more eumelanin. Eumelanin is a brown to black pigment and is able to absorb ultraviolet and visible wavelengths of light. Eumelanin is also able to contain and absorb free radicals. Eumelanin are larger than pheomelanin. They hang out by themselves and take up more space due to their more oval shape. Pheomelanin is the yellow to red pigment. Pheomelanin actually produces free radicals and can worsen the effects of UV exposure. They hang out in groups and are much smaller in shape than eumelanin. Pheomelanin occurs in both hair and skin and is the primary melanin found in red hair. Get this, human skin exhibits only four colors, red, yellow, brown, and blue. Carotene accounts for the yellow color and is rich in foods like carrots. Oxygen-rich hemoglobin in the blood produces the red color. You're going to see this in individuals with rosacea or with visible circulatory issues. Oxygen-depleted hemoglobin produces more of a blue color. A great example of this is when a person is lacking in oxygen and their skin or their lips turn blue in color. The brown color is due, of course, to the pigment melanin, which is the major factor in the color of our skin. So where is this melanocyte troublemaker found in the skin? We will need to focus on two specific cell types in your epidermis, keratinocytes and melanocytes, which are found in the deepest layers of the epidermis called the basal layer. To watch this full length education video, along with dozens of others, click on the link in the description below. Professional skincare training is an all level skincare education platform. It features hours upon hours of skincare training for a low monthly membership price of only $24. Sign up today.